During our series on the book of Hebrews, we've been looking at the pronouns we and us. There are two chapters in the book of Hebrews which strike fear into Bible believing Christians. The sixth chapter and also the tenth chapter. I want to look at some verses uh, in the tenth chapter of May and then add a few comments as we go through it. Uh, let's look at uh, verse 6, chapter 10, verse 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, the pronoun is now singular, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. That of course is from Psalm 40, verse 6. Here we have Jesus speaking in the Psalms to the Father, and it's reported here in the book of Hebrews. Verse 8, above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither has pleasure therein which offered by the law. Then said he, lo I come to do thy will O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ once for all. Okay, once for all are you sanctified through the body of Christ. Of course, as we go through this, the Mass is going to be mentioned, and you're going to see that it's not necessary whatsoever. Uh, verse 11, and every high priest, excuse me, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering, oftentimes, the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins like the Catholic priest, isn't it? Every Sunday uh, he does his Mass, he brings Jesus down from heaven, transubstantiation they call it, doesn't take away sins. Very similar to what we're reading here. Uh, verse 12, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting his enemies be made his footstool. Now watch it, verse 14, For by one offering, he hath perfected, that means completely made right, forever them that are sanctified. Can you see what the writer is trying to say here? That once he's paid the price and he sat down. Now in the Old Testament the Jews stood up throughout the services and couldn't sit down because to sit down would mean that the work of the atonement was done. Of course the work wasn't done because the Messiah hadn't come and dealt with the sins of his people. But in the New Covenant Christ has come, paid the price of sins and he now sits down at the right hand of the Father. Verse 22, let us, the Jewish people, draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to the focus of the good works. Verse 25, not forsaken him, be assembling ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Let us not forsake the gathering together as a Jewish remnant of believers in the Messiah. Verse 26, for if we, the Jewish people, sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, which is Jesus Christ, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking of a judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. It's quite simple here. If you willfully reject the blood of Christ, the atonement of the Lord Jesus, there's no more sacrifice for sins for you. What this is not saying is if you willfully sin, whatever the fleshly sin may be, you've lost your salvation. It's not what it's saying. But it's only if you willfully reject the Messiah, and in this context go back to the Mosaic Covenant, there's no more sin for you, there's no more uh, atonement for sin, shall I say. And John 6, 6, 6 is a great reference to cross-reference here. It says they walked with him no more, but back to the old Mosaic Covenant. Verse 27, but a certain fearful looking of the judgment and fire indignation which I devoured the adversaries. And I've used that verse twice to make the point that if you go back to the law, if you're a Jew, or if you go back to the world, if you're a secular, there remaineth no more sacrifice for you, but a fear for you falling away in the judgment. Thank you for watching this video. Next time we'll look at chapter 6 of the book of Hebrews. 
which deals once again with Jesus' once and for all sacrifice for the sins of many. Thank you and good night.